Hi, everyone. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I'm going to read the gospel for the fourth Sunday of Easter for May the 3rd. But before I read this gospel, I should preface the read with this following thought. It was about two years ago. I received in the mail my favorite magazine. I mentioned this many times, Psychology Today. When I looked at the cover of the magazine, it had for one of the articles inside of the magazine, the 10 most difficult jobs in the world. So before I read the article and opened up the magazine, I got out a sheet of paper. I put some thought into it, but I wrote down on a sheet of paper one to 10. And I started to put down what I thought would be the most difficult jobs in the world, 10 of them. For job number two, I had the President of the United States. And for job number one, the most difficult job in the world, I had the Pope. And after I made my list of 10, I opened up the magazine to see what their 10 looked like. And I read their 10. I was surprised to see that my list was different than theirs. Of course, their researchers put a lot more time and effort into making their list of 10 than I did. But the part that really surprised me was that, that their number one most difficult job in the world was radically different than mine. They didn't list the Pope, they didn't list the President of the United States. They claimed that the most difficult job in the world was the job of being a parent, a mom or dad. Now for those who are mom or dads, I would have to assess that when you think about that answer, you probably would agree that that is a very, very difficult job. And it's like all jobs. If you do the job well, it's more difficult. If you don't do the job well, it becomes much easier. But I'm sure that if you do the job well, it becomes the most difficult job in the world. As I travel through the reading of this gospel, see if you can hear and discover the section of the gospel that really highlights why being a parent is so difficult. Now, the full text of the gospel is coming out of the 10th chapter of John, verses 1 to 10. But when I get to verse 2 and verse 3, and if you have a Bible, you can open up and follow along with me. But when I get to those two key verses, you will discover, as hopefully you discover when I read the gospel, you hear it, and you listen to it, what makes being a parent so difficult. It goes like this, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, when he is driven all out on his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger because they will run away from a stranger because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used the figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. Oh, who came before me of thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I come so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. That is the gospel for this fourth Sunday of Easter, May the 3rd. As I travel through this gospel, did you hear, discover a part, verse 2 and 3, which it turns out to be? that makes being a parent so difficult. If you didn't, I'll read it again. If you did, your lines should agree with mine, verse two and three. It goes like this. The gatekeeper opens it for him, but the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he is driven all out on his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger, they will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of a stranger. Those two verses, verse 2 and 3, 10th chapter of John, what they really purport is the fact that in order for the sheep to recognize the voice of the shepherd, the gatekeeper, it takes great time, a great expense of time, for the shepherd to spend time with the sheep. Every day, 
24 hours a day spending time with his sheep. So the sheep hear his voice, hear her voice over and over and over again. They begin to recognize that voice. And if what they hear and what they are told turns out to offer them safety and security, they will then trust the voice that they hear and they will follow that voice. But if the shepherd decides not to spend time with the sheep, or maybe one, two minutes a day, that's it. Maybe days go by and the shepherd never shows up to even look at the sheep or speak of the sheep or offer to the sheep direction. Those sheep will not recognize the voice of that shepherd. And since they do not recognize the voice of that shepherd, they consider that shepherd a stranger and they'll turn away from that stranger. It takes time to develop that relationship between shepherd and sheep. It takes time to develop that relationship between parent and child, mom and dad to son, daughter. And when you give it that kind of time, then you can sit back. You should be able to be proud of your children knowing that what they are doing, what they are saying is what they heard me say, what they saw me do, and I feel good about that. A friend of mine was telling me a very interesting story. It was uh, about eight or nine years ago. It was a cold winter day. And he was in his house and his wife was doing laundry. His daughter was upstairs in her bedroom. His son was upstairs in his bedroom. And so it was cold and snowy outside and it was a big storm. He decided to get a few logs and put them in the fireplace. Put the logs in the fireplace. He had this big fire going in the fireplace. After that, having the fire started and working really well, that fire, he decided to sit down on the couch and just watch the fire. He got himself a big blanket. He was under the blanket enjoying the, the fire in the fireplace, but he was all by himself. Not by himself in the house. His wife and son and daughter were in other locations, but on that couch, in that living room, he was by himself. As he's sitting there watching the fire, all of a sudden he could tell that the power went out in the house. He, the refrigerator went silent. The furnace went silent. A few answering lights in other rooms, they went off. He knew the power had shut off. About 10 minutes went by in this dark house and his wife made it into the living room and she looked and there was her husband under the covers, sitting on the couch, watching the fire. She walked over to him and he, he opened up the blanket and invited her in and she nestled right alongside of him. And then they closed the blanket. It was just the two of them. They were having a great conversation, a conversation that they hadn't had in a long time because they were always busy. She was doing all the things she had to do as a mom and, and a wife, and he was doing all the things he had to do as a dad and a husband. But they were having this tremendous conversation, just sharing their heart with each other. But 20 minutes later, the daughter makes her way down into the living room, and she looks, and there's mom and dad under the blanket. They invite her in simply by opening up the blanket. She come running over, and she sat down right next to mom, and they closed the blanket. Now the three of them are under the blanket watching the fire, having an incredible time. And at that point, the daughter decided to open up to her parents about trouble she was having at school. She was being bullied, her heart was broken, she was scared and worried. They listened to her story, they tried to offer her some advice and counsel. And they told their daughter, no matter what happens in your life, you must always know that you are loved here in this house. Don't think you're alone in this world because you are not. There are three people, your brother, your mom, your dad, us, that love you more than you can ever imagine, more than we can ever describe. So if you ever feel alone and lonely, just come to us. We are here for you to get you through, to help you get through whatever it is you must face. And she was under that blanket next to mom and dad. She started to feel so good inside. Not only was the fire warm, but the warmth of love that was emanating in her body, just being emitted into her body, just felt so good. About 20 minutes after this young daughter was sitting next to her mom and dad in that couch, the brother came down and he walked in the living room and he looked and there's dad, there's mom, there's sister under the blanket. Well, they opened up the blanket and he come jumping in and sat right next to his sister and he closed the blanket. That blanket was stretched from one end to the other, but it fit. It fit all four of them. They're sitting there watching the fire, nice and toasty together. Well, the son, it turned out to be, he had, he had a set of his own problems. He got in a fight, in a fight that, that day at school. He was punched and didn't know how to respond to the punch. He didn't know what to do. 
He felt so bad and so fearful and so frightened. He, he shared that with his sister and his parents. They offered him guidance on how to counter those who are aggressive toward you. They gave him good advice. They gave him a lot of love and a lot of support. He started to wipe the tears from his eyes and started to feel whole and complete again. And then for a long time, they were just all under that blanket, feeling one, connected. And at one point, my friend said that they stopped talking. They were just enjoying each other's company, nestled shoulder to shoulder, arm to arm, under that blanket, in the living room, on the couch, watching the roaring fire in that fireplace. What an incredible evening, he said that was. He said after being there for a couple hours, he said tragedy struck his family. He was so disappointed when this particular tragedy occurred. He said that he heard the furnace turn on and he heard the sound of the refrigerator and he knew at that point, unfortunately, in his heart, the electric was back. The lights were on. Everything was running in the house. When everyone realized that the power is back, it was shortly after that the son jumped out of the covers and he ran back upstairs to his room and followed shortly by his sister. And then the wife told her husband, I have to finish up these clothes as she left the living room as well. And he sat there on the couch under the blanket all by himself just as he had started several hours earlier, watching now with dwindling fire, still being warmed by it, being warmed by the love he had just experienced with his family, a connection they had not experienced in a long time. And thought to himself, unfortunately, this beautiful night ended by the turning on of the power. If I had only known that was going to happen, I would have pulled the main out of the service box and made sure that power didn't turn on for the rest of the night. But, but life has to continue. It turns out to be that during this lockdown period, I have received a lot of emails, a lot of text messages from many moms and dads in our parish who share with me the fact that not only is this lockdown a challenge for them, but it's been a great augment to their family. How many moms and dads have told me that they are now sharing meals with their children, eating supper together, something they haven't done in a long time? How many husbands and wives have told me by email, text messages, and U.S. mail that they are enjoying just the time of being together, of talking, there's nowhere to go, nowhere to run, you are in some ways forced, at least early on in a lockdown, to look at each other and try to come up conversation. But that conversation has become easier and easier to occur as they got closer and closer to each other. And this lockdown has been difficult on a lot of people, if not everyone. But there's been some positive residuals of lockdown itself, how many families have gotten closer to each other, spending time with each other, recognizing, as the gospel says, each other's voice, hearing the voice of each other. So that you could say, mom and dad, my brother, my sister, all my family members, their voice, that is not a voice that's a stranger. That is a voice that I recognize. That is a voice that I follow because I only follow the voice of those I trust, those I love, and those I know. And the only way to foster those three items is through the expenditure of, of time. I would have to say that once this lockdown is over, it sounds like our state of Pennsylvania is going to allow certain things to open up in May the first golf courses, marinas, and a few other items. Whatever else opens up through the course of May and probably into the month of June. And when we're allowed to circulate freely and go every, anywhere we want to, we just might look back on this lockdown period and say that although it was difficult, and although the virus has caused a lot, us a lot of life, and a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. There has been some silver lining amidst the darkness of tragedy. The silver lining has been the fact that we've been able to spend time together, talking, conversing, listening to each other's voice. My friend said to me that one of the most beautiful nights he had was that night when the power went off, he started a fire, and one by one by one by one, his family nestled with him under that blanket. And they shared heart, they shared time, they made love with each other in a very beautiful way. Although this time is difficult, if you are nestled home with your family, enjoy this time together, sharing meal together, sharing conversation together, 
Because after all of this is over, years from now, you just might look back in the spring of 2020 and say that, yes, that was a difficult time. But too bad in many ways, the power came on. Because when that happened, my family separated. We all went back to our, in our own direction.